In today's video, join me as I try to fix this non-working 40-year-old Commodore home computer. Now, the story behind this is I've had this C16 in my collection for a while, and I've been meaning to fix this broken F1 key that you can see has snapped off here. However, when I got it out to do the video today, after plugging it in, it seems rather disappointingly that the computer no longer works, only displaying a glitchy black screen that you can see here. So it looks like I've been struck with the curse of owning retro computers. And before I fix this broken key, I'm going to have to try and get this working again. And that's what I'm going to attempt now. So let's open this computer up so we can take a closer look inside. Like most retro devices, this Commodore is pretty easy to open with just these three Phillips head screws here that I'm going to be removing with my Phillips head two screwdriver that I've got here and also some latches around the back holding it together. So I'm going to get this open now and I'll be back when that's done. So now it is opened up. I have to say, it always amazes me how little there is component-wise in these old machines. But back to the fall of the black screen, I've done some research and it seems like if the power is working fine, which it is here, then it's possible that either her chip has failed or there is a dirty socket with the 8501 CPU that you can see up here or this TED chip being the likely culprits. So to check if that is the problem, I'm gonna first borrow a compatible CPU from this Commodore Plus 4 that I've dug out from my collection to swap and test. But before I do that, I'm firstly gonna remove the CPU from the C16. And to do this, I'm gonna be using my mini pry bar, which is quite a useful tool. And I can just put it under this side and then sort of lever the side up and then just keep rotating from side to side and pulling it out, making sure to be quite gentle as I don't want to bend any of these pins. So there we go, the CPU is removed now and none of the pins are bent, which is a bit of a miracle for me, I will say. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm gonna safely put this CPU to one side and then make some room for the Commodore Plus 4 that I'm gonna be opening up to borrow the CPU from. Unlike the C16, this computer has five smaller screws. So I'm gonna be using my Phillips head one screwdriver to remove these. The screws are here, here, and here on the front. And then there's also two up here and here. So I'm gonna get these removed, open it up. And once again, I'll be back when that's done. So you can see this is a slightly different layout to the C16. The CPU is here, and this is a 7501, which is a different model to the 8501 that we removed from the C16, but it is compatible. So I'm gonna get that CPU removed now. I didn't wanna bore you with a time-lapse of me removing another CPU, but it is out. And I will say that was an absolute pain. There was too many obstructions on either side, which meant that I struggled to get the leverage to actually pull it out. But I got that in the end, which is the main thing. So now let's get this into the C16 and give it a test. So I've just popped that CPU into the C16 and also plugged the cables in. So now it is at the moment of truth actually switching on to see if it works. So I'm gonna flick the switch over here. And oh, it is working. I am genuinely surprised about that. I'm not usually that lucky for things to be working the first time I attempt to fix them. But just to make sure that everything is working well, I think I'm gonna reconnect the keyboard and also get a game to test out as well. I can confirm that the keyboard is working fine. I've just typed in a little program here that you can see it running now. And now that we know that, that works, it's time to move on to testing with a game. So I've got this game cart here and it's called Jack Attack. And one fun fact I learned about this game was that it was originally gonna be called Cubic Critters. However, Commodore thought that that sounded too similar to Cuba, so I made them change it. And the term Jack Attack comes from a nickname the office staff called Jack Trammell. When he would come into the office all angry and shouting and they said he looked like a red-faced critter. 
And joystick wise, I have had to go hunting for a compatible one as I forgot that Commodore had pulled a bit of an Allen Sugar here and tried to make their own proprietary standard with this round connector. But I have found one, so let's get it plugged in. I'm pleased to report that I've had a quick play of this game and everything seems to be working fine with the audio, the video and the ports. And if you want to see some of that gameplay, I will leave some footage at the end of this video, although I will warn you that I'm not brilliant at playing it. But now we can move on to what I had originally planned, fixing this broken key. Now I've got the C16 here back on the workbench and I've just repeated that process that I did earlier of opening it up, but this time so that I can access this part of the keyboard. And to do this repair, I've bought off of eBay some replacement parts, which are a new plunger, a new keycap, and also a new spring. The plunger is to replace the one currently in the keyboard, which is snapped as you can see here. And the replacement key is because the old one, as you can see here, has a part of the old plunger snapped off and stuck in it. And even some glue in there where someone has tried to fix it in the past. And the new spring is because the old one is missing. So the first thing that we need to do to get this broken plunger removed is to remove all 23 of these tiny screws from the back of the keyboard. And to do that, I've got my Phillips head zero screwdriver. So I'm going to get these screws removed and I'll be back when that's done. Well, that seemed to take an eternity, but it was actually only three minutes, but I'm pleased to say all of those screws are now out. And normally to gain access to remove a plunger, you'd have to desolder this bit here and take off the entire back plate. However, as the F1 key is over this side, I should be able to cheat a little bit and lift the plate up, making sure not to bend it back too much, and then use my tweezers to take out the broken plunger and then pop in the new one like this. So now that the new plunger is in, I just need to put all of those screws back, which is what I'm going to do now. So there we go. It's all back together. After I re-screwed the plate to the keyboard, I reconnected it and then reassembled the computer. And now all that's left to do is to add the new key. Firstly, I'm just going to put the spring on and then I can line up the plunger with this hole here and then just click the key on. So there we have it, one diagnosed and repaired Commodore 16 with a working F1 key. And obviously I'm not gonna leave the CPU that I borrowed from the plus four in there, but for replacing it, there are a few different options that I'll show you now. So the first option is I can either buy an 8501 or 7501 replacement CPU, and they start from about 50 pounds. Or I can buy up one of these adapters, which lets you use an original C64 6510 CPU, like the ones you see here, which is a bit cheaper. And the final option is to go full FPGA and get an emulated version of the CPU like you can see here, for which I'd love for you to let me know in the comments which option you would go for or what you think is the best solution. Overall, I'm really pleased that I managed to get this C16 working today and even fixed the F1 key. Like I said before, I think I am pretty lucky that it was the first chip that I tested that had the fault. It's definitely not always the case, but I guess that's the fun in diagnosing these old computers. And finally, as usual, I'd love to hear your recommendations for games that you enjoy for the Commodore Plus 4 and the C16, or even the good old Commodore 64. Let me know in the comments. But that's all for today. I'll see you next time. You're still here? It's over. If you're going to stick around, at least go and watch one of my other videos. And yes, don't worry, I did put the CPU back in the plus four.